liquor stores stay open very late. So late that these two customers weren't buying it. gun, Danny Moran, occupation hoodlum, hoped to add to his fortune. a gun that was a very special problem. Like I told you, Danny and me split up six months ago. He took a room down on the east side, upstairs from a delicatessen. I, I thought maybe he would come to his senses if I left him. Mrs. Moran, do you want me to believe that you never met any of Danny's friends? That you never visited him in his rooming house after you split up? Then is there any reason you can think of why policewoman Casey here couldn't move into his rooms and pass herself off as Danny's widow? Her pass off as me? Uh-huh. Oh. I'm flattered, Lieutenant, but... If the man or men we're looking for have never met you, they wouldn't know the difference, would they? No, I guess that is a fact now, isn't it? Oh, I did answer the phone a couple of times. No problem there. But if you answered the phone, didn't any of Danny's friends ever identify themselves by name? No, they said they wanted to speak to Danny. Didn't Danny ever call them by name? No, not that I can remember. Kiss? I beg your pardon? Kiss. Kish. Kiss. Kish. That mean anything to you, Casey? No, no, that doesn't sound right. But it's the only name that comes to my mind. I, I remember this, this fellow was very excited. And then when Danny gets on the phone, he tells him, everything's going to be fine. Don't be nervous. Kiss. I, I mean, it sounded like he tells him, don't be nervous, kiss. Oh, I guess I must have gotten it wrong. Thank you for your trouble, Mrs. Moran. moving day again for Casey. Danny's room was not in the part of town most tourists get to see. The address I was looking for was next door to a delicatessen. Looking for a furnished room? Oh, I, I have one already, thanks. No rooms here, lady. She says she has one already. She has? You're his wife. A gangster. Why, Mrs. Moran, if that's what you mean. Her husband's in his grave and buried, we should thank God. And now she comes to start trouble for us again. Hey, do yourself a favor. Yeah. Get out before you come in. Come on. My husband's rent is paid till the end of the month. Get out. Well, we'll Turn trouble, back Martha. every cent. Get out. You don't move in here. The out. In our out. 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 Come on. Out. 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 Stop it, do you hear me? Animals. That's what you are, disgusting animals. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to know you. Nobody invited her. Who needs her? You'll pardon the expression, Sarah, but shut up. I... Don't say one more word. And the rest of you, you haven't got enough to do. You've got to pick on a poor girl. She did something to you? Ah, go home better. Go home and pick on your husbands for a while. Thanks. I... 
I'll give you a hand. I've got it. Heat. But that's an old story. You know, your husband may rest in peace. Whenever I would pay him a visit, he would always show me your picture there. He was very proud to have such a lovely girl for his wife. Were you uh, a friend of my husband's, Mr... Levin. Dave Levin. I run the little delicatessen downstairs. Now, as to your question about my relationship with Danny, the answer is yes and no. Yes, whereas I tried to be a friend, and no, whereas I failed to succeed. Did Danny have any other friends around here? As you could judge by the welcoming committee, no. Most of the people here around knew what he was, should excuse the expression. They were afraid of him, afraid of the gun he carried. Now, I'm not condoning what those women did, but when you try to raise children in such a neighborhood, and the gunman moves into your house... But Danny must have had at least one friend in the neighborhood. Somebody went with him when he robbed that store, and somebody supplied him with a gun. Whoever those individuals were, my dear girl, you're making an assumption that they came from this neighborhood. And a mistake when you say they were his friends. Two things, Sarah. One, you should never enter a person's apartment without knocking. Two, this apartment in particular. I have a feeling you're not welcome here. There's nobody in the store to take care of the customers. So go downstairs. I told you I'll be down in a minute. Now go, go. Don't aggravate. Do I make myself clear? Look, I don't want to be the cause of any argument. Maybe it would be better if you just... Uh... You let me worry about this. You see, my wife is a frightened personality. I apologize to you for her behavior. But in her defense, how she acts is not out of meanness, believe me. I, by nature, I'm a friendly type, like with your Danny. And this worried her. But why? I don't understand. Well, Danny was it. How shall I say? He lived next door to trouble. And some of the people around here and my wife were afraid it might rub off on them, on their husbands, their children in such a neighborhood. I see. So, I think it would be best now if I left. But if there's anything I can do at all for you, I, I would be obliged if you'd mention it. Thank you, Mr. Levin. You've been very nice to me. Sarah, what is this? You're starting up with her now. You didn't have enough trouble with her husband. Don't raise your voice. That's not nice. Stay away from this. Stay away from her. You hear what I'm telling you, Knish? What did she call you? Knish. Oh, the nickname I suffer from in the neighborhood. Dignified, it's not. But it's friendly. It's also good for business. Knish? It's a delicacy. A specialty, my delicatessen. You never ate one? I don't think so. Oh, you got a treat in store. For a nickname, I wouldn't recommend it. But to eat? Mm. Take my word. A knish tastes much better than it sounds. Knish. Kish. Kiss. Three days now, and I was still the least popular girl on the block. You're still here, you dirty rotten you.
My fan mail. Every day. Sometimes twice a day. Neatly folded pieces of paper. Sometimes with only one word printed on it. If I'd really been Mrs. Danny Moran, I wouldn't have stuck it out. But I had to stay. I'd found a man with a name that sounded like Kiss. And he was the last person in the neighborhood I'd have suspected. Or wanted to suspect. Money. Over $200. It made no sense. And then suddenly, it made all the sense in the world. $210.36, huh? Ah, oh, your hunch is right, Casey. That's exactly one half the take of that liquor store hold up. The half Danny had coming to him. Honor amongst thieves. You certain this came from Mr. Knish? Mm-hmm. I kind of wish I wasn't. He's been kind of nice to me. Want to pick him up? Not yet. I'm angling for a bigger catch. From what you tell me, Knish isn't supplying the guns. He may be using them. He may be even the middleman, but he's not the supplier. That's the man we want. You send Mr. Johnson in, please. If anybody can help us, this man can. Mr. Johnson, I should be to drop by. You two met each other? Unless I'm very much mistaken, this young lady purchased her gun at my shop when she first joined the force. <laughs> you have an extremely good memory, Mr. Johnson. How do you do? Mr. Johnson, I'd like you to look at these. For a year now, we've been stymied. There's a stick up, we recover the weapon. Send it down to ballistics. Now, they find it impossible to trace. I should imagine. Beautiful workmanship. Reboard. Regrooved. <laughs> New serial number. Whoever's doctoring these pieces is a real artist. Would you be able to identify any of them if they had been through your shop? It's impossible. I was afraid of that. Sorry. Well, thank you for dropping by. Any time, Lieutenant Rosenberg. Bye. Bye. Uh, Casey, it's all yours. If we're ever going to nail that artist, Ah, uh, Mr. Knish will have to lead us to him. I'd like to try one of those famous Knishes of yours. Knish. Since when are you using my nickname? Well, I think we know each other well enough to be a little less formal. Oh, suits me fine. As a matter of fact, I consider it an honor. You've been very nice to me, Knish. Two hundred and ten dollars and some odd cents. No. I haven't the vaguest idea what you're talking about. But for the sake of argument, if I were a young girl like you, staying in a neighborhood such as this, and I came into a few dollars, I would leave just as quick as I could throw things into my suitcase. Why should I do that, Ganesh? That $200 was only part of the reason I moved in. The smallest part. Hmm. Say, these aren't half bad. Of course, I have a feeling once they go down, I'll be anchored to the floor, but... They're not half bad. You mean the money was only part of the reason why you came here? Ganesh, look. $200 doesn't figure to get me a mink coat or a couple of months in Florida. I'm really disappointed to hear you talk like that. I was led to believe, by a very well-informed source, by Danny himself, that you didn't approve of the way he made his livelihood. Oh. Well, I don't approve of nickels and dimes. If you're going to steal, you steal big. And you steal safe. Oh, I told Danny a hundred times that knocking off stores wasn't the way. You'd go off the bank? Oh, no, no. Bank guards have guns. Huh. Oh, private homes. Full of jewelry. Mink coats. And no uh, gun around to go off in your face. 
You've got it all figured out, little girl. All except where I can lay my hands on a gun. A safe one. A safe gun? That's a contradiction in itself. <laughs> but you helped Danny. You even went with him on a job. It was the one and only time. Yes, I helped him. I rented the gun for him. I did him more. I went with him and I saw him killed. I found out something. I'm not a man cut out for bloodshed. If I said no, if I told you it was a mistake, a terrible mistake, could I talk you out of it? Well, it's not that hard to get a gun. We'll make it happen. But the man I deal with, I hadn't contacted him since Danny was shot. He may not want to deal with me anymore. Also, it's very expensive. For a clean gun, whatever he charges, we'll pay. And you can get your commission, too. Ah, oh, don't you worry about my commission. You worry about yourself. That's why I'm here, Kanish. Well, you need. There'll be two of us. You want my advice? Do yourself a favor. Too many guns, too many trigger fingers. Too much can happen. Settle for one gun between you. Okay. One gun. Can you get it tonight? Finish what's in your plate. What's the matter? You don't like the finish? I like it very much. Factory. Looks all right. Got six bullets in the chamber. And you should try very hard not to use them. You mean after all that work, you still don't know where he got this thing? Sure, we know where he got it. Lock on a Times Square subway station. Boy, he's cagey. The guy on the other end is just as cagey using a public locker. You know, I'll give you odds that he didn't even deliver the merchandise himself. Probably sent it over with some kid for a small tip. Lieutenant, you know, the one thing that really seems to bother Kanish is the possibility that I might panic. That I might uh, actually use that gun. What do you think would happen if I did? And the police are confident that you will be apprehended. How could you? I, I can't get it into my head. Stan, will you quit hopping out of this gun? Unless you just got to help me get away. Of course, I'll help you. I'll do anything I can. But the sum you mentioned, you know that's out of the question. I need that. I much. know, I know you're excited, you're frightened. But be reasonable. Where can I lay my hands on $5,000? The man who rents you the guns. You'd have that much. Well, how can I explain it? What will I tell him? Tell him to read the papers. The man I shot may die. He's already given my description to the police. My partner was wounded. If they put the pressure on him, he should have turned me in. But well, I understand that. But you understand this too, Kanish. If the police catch me, Kanish, they'll catch you. You could do such a thing to me. I'm in trouble. I'm facing a possible murder charge. I'll do anything. And if I'm in trouble, you're in trouble. And if you're in trouble, Kanish, I imagine your friend's in trouble. Unless he's willing to pull us out. It's a quarter after six in the morning. I'm sorry to get you out of bed, but I've got to see you right away. Well, all right. Come on over.
by subway, all the way uptown to the Bronx. By subway, all the way back downtown to Wall Street. Two hours to go 20 blocks. Kanish was taking the long way around, across town by foot. Around the waterfront by cab. I wasn't to know the address of his partner, but if I know anything, I know this city. I knew the precinct we were in. I knew approximately where we were, but I couldn't really be sure of the street we were going to. Close the door behind you, Kanish, and bolt it. Here? What could I do? She needs the money right away. The police might pick her up any moment. Oh, could they now? You idiot! Drop it now! I said drop it! At your feet! This I don't understand. Pick it up! See what you find inside. I sold it to her. Can you beat that? She comes to take me with my own gun. I don't understand. Her. You wouldn't understand if she sat you down in the electric chair and pulled the switch. She's a policewoman. What? Oh, my God. What are we going to do? Take her somewhere and... Take her somewhere! Kill her. What, are you crazy? Why don't you just put that gun down, Mr. Johnson, before you do something that you're going to regret? Don't tell me what to do. I'm giving the orders. Because you've got a gun in your hand? Now, quit kidding yourself. You're no killer. You're not stupid enough or crazy enough to pile that rap on top of everything else you're facing. Now, why don't you just hand me that gun? Stand back, you! Keep away from me! She's right, Mr. Johnson. You! You two bid nothing! You got me into this! I, I, I didn't mean that. You saw what happened. I, it, it, it was a mistake. You saw what happened. It was an accident. I, it, I didn't mean it. it was an he got us out all right. But good. Am I finished? <laughs> Don't be in such a hurry. So I lived to spend the rest of my life in prison. Uh, you'll be there a few years anyway. I won't kid you about that. I wanted to be somebody. To be important. I once had hopes to become a scholar. Next I was a storekeeper. And now I'm a jailbird. I'm sorry, Kanish. It's to be sorry. You did your job. a bad man. Take my word for it. If he did something bad, believe me, it's easy when you live in a place like this. I You hear what she said? She's got something there. Ninety percent of our criminals come from neighborhoods like this. Where did you grow up, Rosie? Me? Block and a half from here. I see it's the precinct. I guess there aren't any easy answers. Lieutenant Rosenberg's right, of course. 
Neighborhoods like this do produce criminals. But they also produce lawyers. And doctors. And judges. And entertainers. And even cops. social register, silk stocking, above the common herd kind of sucker for a game of chance. Like Timmy Van Brock, Sonny Van Brock to the society page editors and head waiters at the East Side Supper Clubs. And say you've played in a game that was way over your head and lost. What should I do? Write him a check. I can't cover it, not to my next quarterly dividend. Write it anyway. Will you hold them off? Don't worry. Is that a drop in on Van Brock? Another bum check? The money's there. You may have to scare it out of him, only this time use your head. Threaten, don't push. No, he's not your kind. Yeah, you and him both. All front, no money. I pay off when I lose. You've got to give me a little time. 24 hours. I can't. Courtney said... There's a law against passing bum checks, didn't you know that? I know, but... There's money around. Get it. I advise you to take care of this. I will if you give me some more time. You got lots of time. 24 hours. Sonny Van Brock, born on Monday, gambled on Tuesday, was desperate on Wednesday. Van Brock was in the hospital but still alive on Thursday when Detective Davis, attached to the DA's office, visited the townhouse of J. Foster Crandall, executor of the Van Brock estate. Yes, but why can't you simply arrest Courtney? Quietly, of course. Thanks. There's no charge. Enticing people to a gambling house? That's not exactly a crime. Driving a boy like young Van Brock to attempt suicide. You can never prove such a thing. We can only pick Courtney up if we nab him in a gambling room while it's operating. Poor Sonny. 
His father was one of my closest friends. Mr. Crandall, how does Courtney feel about women? What are you thinking of? A girl on the force. Somebody who uh, could move around in the same circles you and Courtney move in. Maybe as a member of one of your clubs. What? A policewoman? <laughs> it's absolutely impossible. She wouldn't wash your face in the finger bowl, if that's what you mean. Yes? Mr. Crandall speaking. For Lieutenant Davis. The boy's dead. Bring on your policewoman. Right. <laughs> Oh, hello, Uncle Foster. Courtney insisted on driving me home from the club. Thank you, George. Oh, it was a pleasure, sir. Marcia tells me she's been having a wonderful time. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must dress for dinner. Yes, sir. Well, are you having fun? Up to a point? Oh, what point? <laughs> it's not important. Yes, it is. Girls I squire aren't usually bored. I'm not exactly bored. Tell the truth. Why well, don't you people in New York do anything but go to concerts and theaters and nightclubs? <laughs> what do you do out in uh, Seattle for excitement? I've got a system. System for what? For excitement. The wheel. <laughs> you shot? Wheel. As the song goes, the big wheel runs by faith, but the roulette wheel runs by the grace of the croupier. And it pays off 35 to 1. It does? One weekend, two other girls and I from school went to Las Vegas, and I won $1,400. Because, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but my math prof gave me this system. It's based on the laws of probability. Uh -huh. Look, it really is. I went back half a dozen times. Did you always win? Oh, well, no, but I didn't always follow the system consistently. Then you lost. Well, a few thousand. But that's no fault of the system. It has to work if you give it a chance. With any system, though, I imagine you, uh, you have to be prepared to lose. Oh, well, that's the thrill in gambling, the risk of losing. Look, you put real money down. As they say in Vegas, there's no payoff on mental bets. I see. Well, I'd like to help you out, but unfortunately, I don't know a place for the wheel. Oh. Well, that's too bad. Huh. That would have been fun. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, hmm? Yeah, well, you, you call me around noon. I'll see. Whatever you say. Look, if, if you really want to try, we could go hunting for a wheel. Oh, I'd love to. Tomorrow, about five. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Good night, Marcy. Good night, George. Well, it's all set for tomorrow. Good work, Casey. Tough? Ah, he's pretty cagey. <laughs> Look, where did you get that line about uh, not paying off on mental bets? Oh, uh, an old dice player I used to know. Uh-huh. <laughs> you better deposit this in the morning to cover your losses. <laughs> now, what makes you think I'll lose? You'll lose. How do you size up, Courtney? Hard as they come. The guys running the outfit will be harder. But we'll have a cover on you wherever you go. Early the next evening, a car was at the curb with the chauffeur. Courtney had managed to locate a gambling house that afternoon, he said. Pretty elaborate setup. Car to car radio. Our car was following a leader. They were covering their tracks beautifully. Every 15 minutes, a new car took over. The 
They spotted the cover car that was trailing us. And they had another trick up their sleeves. That was goodbye to the cops who were tailing me. I was on my own without a cover. And I didn't like it. changed cars about a half a dozen times and practically crisscrossed Manhattan before we got there. Well, Miss, um, uh, Miss uh, Crandall, I'm Mr. Courtney. Mr. Logan. Yeah, well, it's, uh, we've been informed. It's nice to have you here tonight, Miss Crandall. Much your pleasure. Miss Crandall is very anxious to try your wheel. Well, certainly. This way. I got $500 worth of chips, the minimum amount. And the lowest price chips there were the $25 kind. No more bets, ladies and gentlemen. The bets are made. Well, good luck. Look, I'll be wandering around. Let me know when you want to go home. Well, not till I break the bank. I'll let you know. <laughs> Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. I played one chip on the red, starting easy. I was going to lose. It had to be slow losing. Slow enough to give me time to find out who the operators were. How are we doing? Not too bad. Still early. Okay, you better get back to your wheel. Hmm? What do I do with these IOUs? You know, your department, you take care you of them. You take care of them yourself. They're your friends. You can't handle your end. Let me know. I'll find someone who can. Don't try any funny business with me. Don't you try to shortchange me. If I did, you wouldn't even know it. Oh, there you are. I wonder what happened to you. What's the matter? You broke already? Oh, not at all. My system works beautifully. I'm exactly even. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work for nothing. Work? I haven't had as much fun in weeks. Ah, oh, that's the way to talk, Miss Randall. You're a girl after my own heart. Not your heart, Logan. That's your money she's after. That's what I meant. Good. I wasn't sure. You say we can't tail them. That's right. Give it to me again. A radio, a conference hookup. Any car following through more than one checkpoint is spotted, like my cover was last night. What if we pulled in one of those drivers and sweated him a little? It won't do any good. Because none of the drivers know where the game is. They only know the next checkpoint, except the last driver. What about monitoring that radio hookup? Cats, calls aren't regular enough. By the time you got a fix on them, they'd be a mile away. We know the game operates. We know the operators. The only thing we don't know is where. Well, now you've got it. Got what? Nothing. The single O, zero. And young Van Brock, we got him, too, in the grave. We can't touch the killers. Unless he makes a slip somewhere. There's not much chance of that. They're too cool. Oh, he's not that cool. Courtney feels very guilty about that kid's death. Enough to throw them off stride? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Look, why don't we release the story to the press? Police suspect murder in Van Brock's death. New clues. Arrest suspected shortly. You know. Hey, you think it would work? You got a better idea? <laughs> Hop to it, Casey. <laughs> Police suspect slide in debt to gambling syndicate. Hint foul play and Van Brock death. May have been murder victim. Murder? Are they kidding? Wasn't it? No. I had to collect, didn't I? You didn't have to press it that hard. No? Well, next time you carry out your own orders.
say this. Tomorrow night's game is going to be the last. The last? As far as I'm concerned. Why, does that bother you? Well, I... I was hoping to get back some of the money I lost. Well, maybe you can. If you play another system. What system? Mine. Uh, playing with my money for me, of course. Will you do it? Sure. Good. And in return, I might do something for you. What? Oh, I was thinking of going down to Rio for Mardi Gras. Might invite you along. Well, let me think about it. Yes, of course. See you usual time? Mm, the usual time. In other words, we got about 24 hours to figure some way to track them down. That's a bit funny. We can track a satellite around the world. We can't track a car through Manhattan. What? What did you say? I said you'd think that if we could track a satellite through outer space, we'd be able to track a car through Manhattan. Davis, who's that man headquarters uses? The one that handles police radio? What's his name? Prescott. That's our boy. Gentlemen, this is the transmitter. This is receiver number one. We'll call this receiver number two. Now, Mr. Davis, if you will take receiver number two over there, and Mr. Willis, if you will take receiver number one over there. Casey, the transmitter. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, put the headphones on and switch on the receivers. Casey, switch on the transmitter. Now, Casey, if you will walk out into the hall, walk up and down the corridors in any direction at all. Any at all. Now, gentlemen, you follow. Interesting, isn't it? You see, gentlemen, the receivers point to the transmitter wherever it is. And in she comes. Well, there's your satellite. <laughs> Did you track me? Of course. This signal will be picked up by those receivers up to a distance of 10 miles. So uh, turn them off now, please, gentlemen. The indicators will point in the direction of the signal, no matter where it comes from. Well, where can I lay out these maps? Oh. The receivers will be in the police cars. Let us say one is uptown here on the west side, another is downtown on the east side. Casey, you begin to move. Now, you're moving all over town, and we're following you, see? Finally, you arrive at your point of destination. Let us say it's uh, somewhere over east here. Well, indicator number one points east toward the East River. Indicator number two downtown points north. Now, we plot these two lines of direction on the map, as you can see I'm doing. And where they intersect, there, gentlemen, is your gambling house. Yeah, but that doesn't pinpoint the house. Oh, it will when you move the receivers in close enough. You could uh, put the transmitter in your purse. It wouldn't be too big. Oh, no, this will never fit in an evening bag. Well, maybe you could put it... Uh... <sighs> maybe you better leave that up to me. Hmm? You decided about our trip to Rio? Well, let's, uh... Let's talk about it after we hit the jackpot. All right. Your arm doesn't hurt too badly, does it? No, no, it's only a slight sprain. You know what to do. The number is 36 red. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. The number is one red. At the end of an hour, not one of his numbers had paid off. Lost $5,000.
And at the end of an hour and a half, I was down $7,000. Only $3,000 left. Play number 13, $1,500. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. No more bets, ladies and gentlemen. No more bets. The bets are closed. There it was. The fix was on. The number is 13 black. Oh. Number 13 at 35 to 1 for $1,500. Dizzy arithmetic. Over 40000 for Courtney. But if he was running this game, what was he trying to do? I had a headache now. A real one. Will you uh, cash them in for me, please? Very well, Miss Crandall. Boy. Oh. <laughs> Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Make your bets. Staged. What's Jackson's cut? What do you mean? Coupier. You two had this rig, didn't you? Shot. No. Good. You're my kind of girl. How about real? Well, it's tempting, but. Mardi Gras, Guanabara Bay, Copacabana Beach. Change your mind. Take me home, George. I see. Look, I've got to go. Here's your money. Not here. I'll meet you later at your place. There'll be a car downstairs waiting for you. I could handle him when he played it hard. But for a second, he showed the real George Courtney. For more reasons than one, it was time to go. Mm -hmm. This way, Miss Crandall. I'd step in if I were you. The money. Hand it over. Look, I want it. Yeah, you and Courtney. A couple of society crooks with a tired old angle. You lose big, but you win bigger, huh? I told him not to try anything. All right, come on, let's have it. argue with is a gun. There you are. Pretty boy trying to pull a gag on an old pro like me, huh? I told you not to shortchange me. And the time I get through with you, you won't be so pretty. You look just like a bum who's been in the gutter for 20 years. Wait a minute. Hey. And what is this? A radio transmitter. Who are you, anyhow? Hey, give me that. A detective special. <laughs> a lady cop. Courtney's society girlfriend, a lady cop. Oh, I tell you, that's a laugh. <laughs> well, you've been saved a beating, Mr. Pretty Boy. Because I'm getting out of here. Cops will be coming in any minute. Come along with me. You're going to be my police escort. Leave without our money, must All we? right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a raid. Come along quietly and nobody will get hurt. It's too late. Hey, well, I nearly have it made. Nearly. You know, my grandfather made his in railroads. And I was taking people for a ride, too. It's a public service. It's very funny. Until you think of young Van Brock. 
I never wanted that to happen. I hope you believe me. I believe you. But it uh, doesn't help that kid. first Courtney ever to be arrested. But then I'm the first Courtney ever to be born with uh, insufficient funds. Thank you for getting me out of a bad spot with Logan. It wasn't you I was thinking of, it was the money. Marcia, uh, <laughs> officer, it wasn't really the money. The other Courtney speaking. The nice one. Maybe someday that, that side of him will win out. Huh. But I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> 